guest in the studio today for, for the last segment of the show. Um, we have some gentlemen from the future world of Israel. The future world of Israel. I don't know what that is, so they're going to have to explain that. I'm going to let all of you uh, introduce yourself first before we get into that. Uh, introduce yourself. Okay, hey, shalom, Bahamas, shalom, um, listen audience. Uh, my name is Captain Amram, uh, the leader of Future World of Israel here in the Bahamas. And to my left. I am Officer Keith Officer Zev. And we have two other brothers here, um, Brother Keith and Brother JJ. Okay, Future World of Israel. Um, you introduce yourself as Captain, and these other self introduce yourself as Officer. Right. This is some kind of military coup? <laughs> no, sir. And you start talking with Shalom, so that sounds like some, some Muslim to do. No, you know. So you know, you got plenty explaining to do right now. Well, you know, Shalom uh, in the Hebrew is just peace. Yeah, understand, mm -hmm. and I know you know that. Of course. <laughs> okay. But um, I have to make you explain it to the public. Right. Uh, did you get the scripture? Um, but, All right. Well, so what we're about to do right now is we're going to explain who, why we are called officers and captains. Everything we do, we are the future world of Israel. Everything mm -hmm. that we do is straight out of the Bible. We want y'all to understand that first and foremost. Just give us a second to get that scripture. You got it. Mm -hmm. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 1, and verse 15. So I took the chief of your tribes, wise men and known, and made them heads over you, captains over thousands. Captains over what? Captains over thousands. Uh -huh. And captains over hundreds. So this is in the wilderness. This is how they set up order and structure, because you all know that the Most High is a God of order and structure. Read that again. So I took chief, the chief of your tribes, wise men and known, and made them heads over you, Captains over thousands, and captains over hundreds, mm -hmm. and captains over fifties, and captains over tens, uh -huh. and officers among your tribes. So you see all of those captains that they have in the scriptures. You're not going to get this understanding in the church, because this is out of the um, scripture. Now, the only thing is that that was, that was the, the recommendation that, that, that um, Moses' uh, father-in-law, Jethro, gave to him because mm -hmm. he said that okay, you're doing everything and you're gonna burn out. So what you should what you should do with these two individuals is kinda of organize them and put people over people and, and so you don't burn out. Um, that doesn't mean that that was supposed to be for him and ever that was just for him because the early church didn't do it. No one else did it. That was just for, for, for some advice for him to follow. Um, so I don't know if if that was for forever. But if you guys choose to take on that there's nothing wrong with that. Right, I mean you go in the New Testament too, okay? You know, you have, um, you have uh, churches set up, and you have, what, bishops? Mm -hmm. All it means is just leaders, you understand? Mm -hmm. the church because Israel is the church, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, from back in the wilderness, Israel is the church. But first and foremost, we have to establish that we are the Israelites. Because before we go anywhere, actually, uh, we have to establish that we so-called blacks, Hispanics, Haitian, Jamaicans, you know, West Indian, of Negro and Indian descent, we are the biblical Israelites according to the Bible, okay? We are the Lord's chosen people. And that's what, first and foremost, a lot of our people have to understand, okay? Because we have this uh, nationality that has been put upon us as behemoth, which means shallow water. But you can't find behemoth in the Bible. Mm -hmm. The Mosaic created 18 nations according to the Bible. Mm -hmm. So where's behemoth? Where's Jamaican? Where's Haitian? Okay, that's why you have to come back to the scriptures to understand. Hold up, give me Jeremiah uh, 17 and 4. The book of Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 4. Go ahead. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage, that I gave thee. You see that? And thou, Jeremiah is speaking to the children of Israel. So you're going to discontinue from your heritage. Okay, the heritage is what? Your name, your laws, statutes, and commandments. Read on. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies. Say what? And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies. So remember, our enemies gave us this name. Like Haiti. Napoleon gave them, it means hell. Okay, mm -hmm. because he was defeated. Mm -hmm. You know, Christopher Columbus gave us this name with Haiti. And America, African Americans, okay, they call themselves African Americans, but they're what? They're from the tribe of Judah. You can't be two. You can't be two, uh, two people at the same time. So you say that all Africans are from the tribe of Judah? No, Africans. We gotta understand something. Africans are not the uh, the natural born Africans are not the Israelites. Okay, remember we call ourselves Africans because they have the same dark skin color as the Africans. Give me um. Is it, uh, so there are some. Hold well, on, before we go there, there are uh, some Africans. Who are from the tribe of Judah and some who are not? No, there are no Africans from the tribe of Judah. 
The tribe of Judah is only from the fourth born of the nation of Israel. They just happen to be dark skinned. They just happen to be dark skinned. Like the Chinese and the uh, the Chinese and the Japanese, they look alike. You can you can't really tell the difference. They're the same. They just no, grew they, up on two different islands. No, they're the no, same no. people. No, they are not. One is Ammon, okay, and mm -hmm. one is a Moab. Mm -hmm. Okay? When you read go back to the history of the Bible, I mean mm -hmm. go back to the uh, biblical text, okay? Mm -hmm. But because we're the same dark skinned people that don't make us the same race of people. Read that brother. Exodus 11 and 7. Exodus chapter 11 verse 7. Go ahead. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue. Read on. Against man or beast. Read. That ye may know how the do that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. So you see? So there's a difference between the Egyptians who are Africans, mm -hmm. okay, and Israel. Okay, so like I said, we all have the same skin color, but we are different race of people. That's why um, we said that, that's why we said, um, of Negroid and Indian descent. Who okay, so, so back to the question. Mm -hmm. What is the future world okay. of Israel? Future world of Israel, it may represent that what? When Christ returned mm -hmm. and established a new kingdom on the earth, Israel is that kingdom, is that nation that is going to rule the earth again. Mm -hmm. That's why we say future world of Israel. Mm -hmm. Okay? We have that. In the text. Is this an international yeah, um, yes it is. religion? It's not a religion. It's a way of life. It's a heritage. The Most High gave us our laws, statutes, commandments, and we're supposed to what? This is how we're supposed to live by the mm -hmm. commandments of the Heavenly Father. Okay? But um, we have uh, branches. This branch here in the Bahamas, uh, it's the future world of Israel branch here in the Bahamas, but we have a branch in New York, okay? Uh, Chicago. Is this the same as the fellas who will be standing in New York in Times Square in the funny clothes in the <laughs> streets and saying that, you know, we are black Jews? Well, what it is, is many different uh, Israelite camps. Okay, there's many different uh, Hebrew Israelites. I ask that because I see y'all on Kamaikal Road right. standing up in the streets. Teaching, right. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing with us. But um, the main thing that we all have in common is that we know that we are the biblical Israelites or the biblical Jews so everybody can understand. Right, so I'm just trying to figure out who y'all are associated with. So you said that y'all are all over America. Any other countries? Um, right now we have some brothers in, uh, I think it's the UK. Um, right, Germany. Germany. right. Actually, you got some brothers in Germany, and mm -hmm. Germany uh, some in Italy. So we have some brothers scattered about. Mm -hmm. Understand that, um, you know, as a part of the church, as part of the body, future world of Israel. There are other so what do y'all believe? Do y'all believe that Jesus is Lord? Yes, most definitely. Because y'all believe Jesus was black. Yes. Scripture Not says believe, just scripturally based that he is black. Okay, show me that. Get it. Revelation. Revelation one and one. The book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 1. These fellas, like machines, and yeah, I mean, a bunch of them got Bible in front of them, and they just rolling, brrr, rolling straight to these scriptures. Yeah, um, we're actually going to show you the reason why we do that. Um, first Peter chapter 4 and verse 11, too. Uh, because what we have to understand is, you being the prophet of the Most High, coming to teach the words of the Most High, the Most High gives you strict thought on what to do. First Peter 1 and 11. First Peter chapter 4, verse 11. If any man speak... Uh -huh. Let him speak as the oracles of God. So the Most High commands us if we're speaking, we ought to speak His words. All right, read. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. Mm -hmm. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God gives. All right. So what we're going to do is every time we have a question, your callers come in, come to, um, you know, call into the show. We're going to respond with the scriptures because that's what we are commanded to do. All right. Mm -hmm. Keep me Revelation chapter 1 and verse 1. Go ahead. The revelation of Jesus Christ. In the revealment of Jesus Christ. Read. Which God gave unto him uh -huh. to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. To show unto his servants things which must surely come to pass. Jump uh, to verse 11, I think. Oh. Verse 11. Saying, I am Alpha and Omega. Go ahead. The first and the last. Uh -huh. And what thou seest, write in a book. So, Christ is telling John the Revelator. Because remember, John the Revelator was what? On the Isle of Patmos. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nero put him to be put to death, and um, Christ came. Christ came to it, comfort uh, John the Revelator. Mm -hmm. So read it again. He said, "What? And what thou seest, write in the book." So Christ said, "What thou seest, do it. Write in a book. Made to what record." So there's a reason why Christ said that. Go ahead. Verse fifteen. Verse fourteen. Go ahead. And his head and his hairs were white like wool. And his what? His head and his hairs were white like so wool. Saying that Christ here, the hair on his head and the hair on his face were white like wool. Mm -hmm. Who of the woolly texture here on the earth today? The black people. All right, because you know, in some of your Christian churches and a lot of our homes, you have uh, uh, the so-called Caucasian blonde man with blue eyes and long hair. You understand? But that doesn't fit the description of Christ according to the Bible. Read on. 
as white as snow. Uh huh. And his feet and his eyes was the flame of fire. And his eyes were the flame of fire. Why? Because Christ drank wine. Yes. Okay. Because it's a prophecy. Oh, let get Genesis. <laughs> Genesis man, forty nine and twelve. Yeah, man. Uh, and you can read it. I think it's Matthew eighteen eleven. Hold on, no, I got I got to stop you right there because you know people listening to this. Go ahead. Um, 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 yeah, Christ did drink wine. All right then. Um, <laughs> um, but that is not the only thing that makes the eye red. Now, what happened is that this was a vision. And so visions have symbolism, like in vision, stars mean angels, and certain right. things have certain meanings. Right, and so right. his hair, yeah. being white like wool, was had a had a meaning. Okay. It, yeah. Not necessarily that his hair was white like wool, because Jesus never got old. He was thirty three when he died, right. so he never had white hair. How old are you? And so us? that was. Hmm? How old are you? I'm thirty nine. And I see your gray on your head right now. I have and black and gray. <laughs> My hair ain't white like wool. <laughs> but <laughs> I had gray hair from high school after. All right. Um, yeah, so that doesn't meaning that Jesus' hair was actually white like wool in a physical sense. That, All right. is, that is in a symbolic sense. All right, then so that don't tell that me that Jesus was black. All right, well, we can prove that. We can let the scripture prove that to you, okay? Okay. Read Genesis 49 and 12. Genesis chapter 49 and verse 12. Go ahead. His eyes shall be red with wine. That's the prophecy on Christ. His eyes shall be what? Red with wine. Go okay. back to Revelation uh, 1 and... In, 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 hold on, in symbolism, hold on, in, in prophetic right now, symbolism, uh, wine is symbolic of blood. All right, hold on, brother, we get it right now for you. That, that, give us a and second. And so, Moses turned water to blood. Jesus turned water to wine, which is symbolic of what Moses did back in the day. All right, so because, wine, uh -huh. so it's a symbolism. All right, if you say so, we, yeah, we can prove what wrong. We can prove, okay, keep we, going. We can prove keep that going. point to you right now, okay? Go back to where it says, and I turn to see the All voice right. that spake with me. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 12. Go ahead. And I turned. So, hold on. Was this the vision? What he did? And I turned. So, John the Revelator said he turned. Read. To see the voice that spake with me. To what? To see the voice that spake with so, me. So, that ain't no vision. Go ahead. And I saw seven golden candlesticks. Uh-huh. And in the midst of seven golden candlesticks. Read. One like unto the Son of Man. Go ahead. Clothed with a garment down to the foot. So it's letting you know that he saw even what Christ had on the garment. Like how we are on the garments when we are mm, teaching. Right, Christ had on the garment down to the foot. Read. And girt about the paps with the golden girdle. Read on. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So it wasn't no a vision. His what? His head and his hairs were white like wool. Read on. As white as snow. Go ahead. And his eyes were as the flame of fire. Read on. Verse 15. And his feet like unto fine brass. And his what? And his feet like unto fine brass. And his feet like unto fine brass. And we all know what uh, brass, the color of brass is derogatory of what, uh, brown, right? Different shades of brown. Mm -hmm. Read. As so, if. Hold on, stop. So I was letting you know that what? Christ is a dark skinned man like you and I, brothers and sisters. Listen, again, all of this is symbolism. We can get it right now, brother. Your feet being made of bronze has right, a symbolic meaning. It means that you are, you, are, you are pure, you are sinless. All right. When your feet made of clay, it means that you are, you are sinful. No. That, that's just symbolic. Well, we can deal with that. But keep going, keep going, keep going. We keep dealing with that right now. Finish reading, and his feet was like what? And his feet like unto fine brass. And his feet like unto fine brass, read. As if they burned in a furnace. Right, so letting you know what? As if his feet, like, as if it was burnt in the furnace, meaning what? Christ was a dark skin. Let's get it in uh, Daniel. Daniel chapter 10 and verse 5. Read. And I lifted up mine eyes and looked. Right, because Daniel saw him again. Read. And behold, a certain man clothed in linen. And behold, a certain man clothed in linen. Read. Whose loins were girded with the fine gold of Euphrates. Read. His body was also like the barrel. Uh huh. And his face as the appearance of lightning. Read on. And his eyes as lamps of fire. And his what? And his eyes as lamps of fire. Go ahead. And his arms and his feet, like in color, Woo. to polished brass. So color is in the Bible. Read that again. And his what? And his arms and his feet, like in color, to polished brass. Like in color, to polished brass. Okay. Now, get the one in, uh, about uh, the hair, about the woolly hair. That's in, in no, no, but that's the one right in uh, Daniel. I think, I think it's Daniel 9 and 7. I don't know, sir. Right. Daniel chapter 7, verse 7 9. 9. 7 and 9. Go ahead. I beheld, I beheld till the thrones were cast down. Now, this is going to blow a lot of people up. That I beheld till what? Till the thrones were cast down. Meaning that all the kingdom of the earth was cast down, okay? Read. And the Ancient of Days did sit. But who's the Ancient of Days? The Christ. No, the Mosai. Mm -hmm. No beginning, no end. Read. Whose garment was white as snow. So you're letting you know the Mosai wore a garment too. Read. 
and the hair of his head. And the what? And the hair of his head. And the hair of his head, read. Like the pure wool. Mm -hmm. Like the what? Like the pure wool. So you see, go back to so it. Ain't no symbolism, brother. Okay. Um, Daniel saw visions and symbols, and so did John. And all of these are, to me, symbolism. All I right. Wanna, read. I, hold, hold on, on one, one sec. One sec. I, I want to get Revelation back down to so, Before we go back to, to all the, the, the scriptures, we've got to take commercial break. The music is playing. Okay. I'm going to find out some more about each of you personally, and how did you get involved in this? Um, you know, the public wants to hear your scriptures, but they also want to hear your story. How did you get here? Ladies and gentlemen, this show is for everyone. We give everyone a point of view. We even let uh, let an LH come on the show. <laughs> but this this is for everyone. Um, and so and so, if you have a point of view, if you have something you want to bring forth, let me know. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Real Talk Reloaded, ladies and gentlemen. This is the hottest show on the planet. Uh, we got some guys on here. Um, we see them on uh, coming the road preaching <coughs> in the little day, um, and they are preaching. They 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 dress and and. Um, um, some stuff that we're not used to seeing, and they preach a message that we're not used to hearing. And we decided to find out what are these guys talking about in the Michael Road? Um, and what, what are they preaching about? They said they are the, the future. What, what do you call yourself? Future world of Israel. That's the who we are. Future world of Israel. Yes, sir. How did you get to join this? Uh, me, uh, for those of you listening, I'm Officer Key said. I used to play piano in a Pentecostal church. That's the name your mommy gave you? Or? No, the name that I so was... So you guys change names like Muslims? <laughs> well, biblically, yes, we, we do that. It's a prophecy when you read in Isaiah 44 and 5. So what did you change your name to? What does that mean? He said, it's a Hebrew word that means mercy. Mm. The same, it means the same thing as my, my birth name, which is Mercedes. Uh, okay. Both of them mean the same thing, mercy. Okay. But um, I came into, um, into this understanding of the scriptures, into this truth, um, from these gentlemen here, I came from school one one summer I was in college, and um, they showed me a couple of scriptures. I went ahead, um, one or two of them, um, came to Deuteronomy, and, and these these scriptures really stuck out to me because even when I was in the Christian church, I was like, man, you know, with with these people preaching, there's kind of a contradiction um, going on because when I read the Bible, it says certain things, but they're telling me something different. So I just want to um, get this, uh, the scriptures that really stuck out to me. 15 and then 68. Yeah. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, mm -hmm. that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So this is a prophecy to the nation of Israel when it was in the wilderness that if they didn't keep God's commandments, that certain curses would come upon them. Now we're going to read one of the prophecies that really stuck out to me. Maybe it'll touch one or two of you out there. 68. Verse 68, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again give with me the, ships. Give me the precept. Give me the precept. Move it too fast. It says, he will bring you back into Egypt. Now we need to understand what they're talking about because most people will just read the words of the Bible. They, they don't understand what it's saying, but they'll still proceed to the next verse, next verse, and don't really get understanding of it. But when you understand the Bible, you have to read precept upon precept because the Bible is a big jigsaw puzzle that you have to understand. Mm -hmm. Read what you have. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. So this is how you know what Egypt is. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So it makes sense because they just came out of slavery. They just came out of captivity. So he is saying you're going to go back into that same, that same environment. You're going to go back into slavery. Read. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So you go back into slavery with ships this time. Now a lot of people are already thinking, man, you know... Greeks, the, the Romans, the Babylonians, everybody went into, into slavery with slave ships. You know, that's, that's not history, but it's going to get more definitive for you. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, mm -hmm. thou shalt see it no more again. Wait. And there you shall be sold, you, what? you shall be sold unto your enemies uh -huh. for born men and born women. And that's our history. That's what happened to our people. That's the transatlantic slave trade. Now, if we had more time, I would show you the trans-Saharan slave trade in Bible prophecy and all the other curses. But this here really stuck out to me because this is the, 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 the history of our people. And that we have to come back to the laws, the statutes, the commandments, that thou shalt not steal, that thou shalt not kill. Because people want to tell you all day, every Sunday morning, that you, know, you don't have to keep the commandments because Christ died for our sins. And then they turn around because Tyrone from down the street broke into their houses. 
You see what I'm saying? So we have to come back to these commandments. This this really stuck out to me. And from then I, I changed my life um, from being the wicked man that I was, you know, hallmongering and all these other things that I don't want to get into. But Hallmongering? You were selling? There was a lot of there was a lot of things that you know when you when you're young you you go out and you do these things of getting drunk and you know just trying to live life like they say you know how they were saying YOLO back in the day mm. that was basically what it was and especially in college college is a different world on its own. So y'all follow all of the laws of the Bible the 613 laws of the Bible. Yes, sir. The only ones that you don't keep are the ones that. Uh, are the ones that dealt with sacrificial laws because you can't provide a better lamb than the Most High did. You can't provide a better lamb than Christ. So those are the only laws that were done away with. When you understand the scriptures, you can get that in Matthew five seventeen. You know, so Christ was that sacrifice so we could repent. Because when you read in the book of Hebrews, it goes a little deeper but into Christ. After he said the law and the prophets was until John. But the prophecies after are still that, not it's done. the kingdom of God, and the whole world presses into it. We're going to show you what that's really good. What's he said that, that there's, only, there's only two commandments, love God and love, love your neighbor. Mm -hmm. What is love? Love, right. 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 God is love. Because a, a boyfriend could tell a girlfriend, I love you all day, but, she, but he beating it out. Right. So, so what is love? Is telling love someone, beating it out? Telling someone you love them doesn't mean you love them. So love is an action word. Remember, yes, it is. Remember what I told you. We're going to get the precepts to help you guys to understand this Bible. First John chapter 5 and verse 3. This is what love is. For this is the love of God, mm -hmm. that we keep His commandments. And this is almost to the end of the Bible. Mm -hmm. This is after Christ. Mm -hmm. Read that one more time. For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments. So the commandments are not done away with. Christ died so that we could get repentance, so that we could be forgiven. Because the laws that are in Deuteronomy, Leviticus, etc. are not commandments. When that says commandments, that's not talking about what we call the Ten Commandments, etc. That's talking about doing His will. That's talking about doing what God instructs you to do. What is His will? That wasn't, that wasn't talking about the stuff in Deuteronomy and in Leviticus and all of those stuff. What is God's will? You have to, to seek that for yourself. No. <laughs> no See, because I, when no, I was in a Christian church, playing the piano, warned people out of they, their tithe money. Right, right. I used to think that the will of God was whatever, whatever I thought it was. But we're going to show you what the Bible says the will of God is. Psalm chapter 40 and verse 8. Uh -huh. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law, thy, what? thy law is within my heart. You see that? Every, what you have to understand about the Bible, the Bible is so redundant. But... With our people, we so hard-headed and stiff-necked that he has to say it over and over by different people right. at different times in history, different ways so that we can understand. Mm -hmm. We just told you what love is. You said you got to have the love in your heart, love your brother, love. Well, if I love my brother, I'm not going to commit adultery. If I love my yeah, brother, I'm not going to kill him. I'm not going to steal from him. But he is, he is going back to those commandments. Mm -hmm. See, Christ had to teach the people in a certain way because they already knew the law. They just didn't keep it. They wouldn't. They wasn't keeping it. So we had to. He had to. He had to uh, tell them a different way that they would understand. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now you said. Now you got to do the will of God. Well, we showed you the will of God is the laws. Mm -hmm. And it no, says no, no, that no. again. Paul that. said that again. Let me read that again. Psalm chapter forty and verse eight. I delight to do Thy will, O my God. Yea. Yes. Thy law is within my heart. Yes, Your law is in my heart, so I'm doing Your will. Yeah, those two statements are separate, though. No, read that again. For I you gotta read that sixteen times. Go to your next scripture. I gotta read it until you understand. But anyway, it, it go to um, Matthew five seventeen, because you said that the law and the prophets were until John, but there's still prophecies like what Isaiah prophesied that Christ would die. That happened. Mm -hmm. But you also have Daniel who talks about certain kingdoms that's gonna fall. You also have Daniel that's talking about the return of Christ. You have a whole bunch of prophecies that's talking about gathering Israel together, like Zephaniah. Right. You have prophecies of who is going to be chosen by the Most High in the in the Old Testament. So those prophecies have not been done who, away with who, unless who was, you're saying that they're first? false prophets. Who was, let me have you some. Who was first, David or Moses? Say that again. Who was first, David? Moses came before David. Moses came before David. Okay. And uh, 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 what was what was David's purpose? Say that again. What was David's purpose? What do you mean? What, what was his purpose? Who was he? Well, there's many things that David did. Of the seed of David, you got Christ. For one thing, he established the kingdom again. For one thing, in, in his righteousness, he, he set it up so that Solomon could have peace during his rulership. That's, that's one thing. There's many things that, you know. To set it up, uh, to keep the kingdom together, keep the people together so that Christ could come through. 
first it comes through that. Right. And he Moses. said that he came to fulfill the law. And he said the law and the prophets was until. Give me Luke. Hold but on. I, I don't, I don't want, Luke I don't want the major, but I really want y'all to right. hear. Well, let, let me just, let me just well. show you something quick because you keep uh, talking about the law fulfilled. Luke 16, 16. Grab that quick. Luke chapter 16, verse 16. Read. The law and the prophets were until John. Read. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached. As you keep quoting this, read on. And every man presseth into it. Go ahead. And it is easier for heaven and <laughs> earth to pass uh -huh. than one tittle of the law to fail. See, you keep reading 16 to 16, but you didn't jump down to 17 to get the understanding. Okay? So it is easier, okay, for heaven and earth to pass than one jot or one tittle from the law to pass. So let me you know the law is still in effect. Okay? Yes. See, the law and the prophets had a purpose. The law and all of these practices that they had, we almost had a time, the, the practices that they had was for a purpose. It was because the people were going astray and God wanted to keep them in check. The law was given them because of the hardness of their hearts to keep them in check so that, that, that they stayed in order. The prophet's purpose was to prophesy of the coming of Jesus Christ, who would be the ultimate sacrifice. So once Jesus came, we didn't need the prophets anymore because they were to prophesy about Jesus. When you say something is fulfilled, that's like I go in grade 12 and then I fulfill the requirements of school and so now I can graduate. It's fulfilled. That doesn't mean I have to keep going back to school. That school doesn't necessarily go away. The purpose of it doesn't go away. The education I learn doesn't go away. But I don't have to get up 9 o'clock, uh, be there for 9 o'clock every morning anymore because I've fulfilled all of those things. All right. Just let me, let me read a couple of texts before I go on because maybe some people have some questions here. I just have to see. Why is, some of these are going to be referenced to the people who were here before, because we didn't get to read the text. Why isn't Mr. Frederico Mitchell issuing an advisory on traveling to Florida? Um, Zika is there. This is also just another part of the world's depopulation program. They can't feed the people, so they have to damage us from the womb to stop growth. Another text. Um, Lincoln, do these guys recognize the state of Israel as black Jews? Are they related to the Falasha Jews of Ethiopia? Why do they use the King James Bible instead of the Torah to answer questions? When they travel outside of the country, do they use their Jewish passports instead of the Damon passports? <laughs> and in their passports, do they use Jewish names? Is this another escapist fantasy the black man has conjured up to cope with the realities of, of life? Answer that quick, because you got more. All right, give, question. We're going to yeah. get to the point with something else. Uh, uh, you're not going to answer We're, we're, okay. we're going to. Not right now. Okay, uh, I have to read that. Shalom, my brothers. Most high in Christ. <laughs> Bless. I am um, new. I watch <laughs> all the YouTube <laughs> videos. Glad to know you are here. Can't wait to fellowship. We'll contact you. Uh, right. They will contact you, or can they contact you? All right. They can email us at fwoisrael at gmail.com. They can send us messages on YouTube. Just search FWOI Bahamas. Um, every Tuesday and every Thursday at about 6.30, 7 o'clock, we have classes at Arm Bailey High. Uh, you could just really ask the security to direct you. She, they know us pretty well. Um, those are different ways that you can um, reach out to us. The email again is FWOisrael at gmail.com. Right, okay. my number two. But quick, uh, 395-4607. Okay, and that's Amram. You can reach me at 395-4607. Okay, next. Face, like, someone says, face like lightning could mean white. Arms like brass could mean black. There was no two Easy. Is yeah, easy all answer. it is. Three there was never more. a two-tone colored man walking the earth. Simple answer. Right. What you have to understand is that the image of the white Jesus Christ, that is in many of our churches today, that was an actual man. His name is Caesar Borgia or Cesar Borgia. Okay? You can Google him. He was the second son of Pope Alexander VI of Rome. Serving and worshiping that image given to us during the Renaissance period, okay, that's idolatry. That's when those sketches of Leonardo da Vinci, Michael D'Angelo, they, they painted that image, all right? When you read the scriptures, you have the true image of Christ. That looks like what? A so-called Negro. I right? read one last, one last text. Mr. Bain, their description of Jesus in Revelation is figurative. They they know the scriptures. God bless them. And you know, Christ even uh, give the description of himself, okay? Uh, you, know, to, you know, to solidify this. Give me hold. I get Revelation 2 and 18. But 
Because what happened after people love you? You're out of time, you just get to the point. All right, Revelation 2.18. Revelation 2.18, I ahead. went to the angel of the, the church in Thyatira, right? right. And to the angel talking about the leaders, okay, of the church. Read. These things said the Son of God, who hath, I, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. So Christ even said... Okay, all of the symbolic. Come on. <laughs> Someone says, Mr. Bain, who care if God is black? Uh, what the difference it make? You did not say uh, that have, when they pushed this white image have, of Jesus in our faces. Their Nobody guy says or, that. Their guy or not for real. Where you find these guys? <laughs> now you find them on the back of the road. Um, you need two days on Bible story. Even Moses' hair became fully white as wool the minute he came in the presence of the Most High. I believe in a higher power, but I have a question that nobody wants to answer. If I have sex with a 12-year-old girl, what will happen to me? So why in the Bible they say God had sex with a 12-year-old girl called Mary, who had a son called Jesus? This is why I don't trust reading the Bible. The Bible does again, never talk about that. I wish we had more time again, to touch I have, that. Well, we'll, have, we'll have another time to deal with all that. And, and I wish I could answer this person's question. I might touch it. Send a text to me tomorrow and I'll deal with it. The she was she had a maculate conception. No. And the the we we'll, we'll deal with that. Uh, I, I don't have time to deal with it now. I just read that text. <laughs> this dramatic reading of the Bible, though. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the, the dramatic is some good stuff. Um, that we wanted to give you all a voice. We we are uh, square out of time. Um, we can try to, to to get you back on to talk more about you know what it is you all believe. This is new to the Bahamas, so so. Uh, Give you all a voice. I mean, let people hear you all. I didn't want to really debate you all, you know, today on some things you said that I didn't agree with um, because I wanted people to actually hear, you know, mm -hmm. what you all was about. Where can they find you? Uh, they can find us on every Sabbath. We are on Carmichael Road, you know, opposite Southwest Plaza, you know, bringing forward the word. You know, if you have any questions, come. But next week, uh, Saturday, come and stop it, come in Lodgeville. We'll probably be somewhere on uh, Fox Hill Road, somewhere anywhere in the vicinity around. So you all have a building? Oh. Right now, we teach, uh, like I said, our own belief, and um, we're getting the building, so... Oh, so you're in a classroom? Yeah, we're in a classroom, mm -hmm. and we have online classes too, okay? So if you reach out to us, like I said, my number is 395-4607, and we can give you the website or the link. Or if you go on to YouTube, our YouTube page, you can find the link to the classes right there, okay? We have online classes Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, Saturday night, okay? Okay, there's then, online classes to find out um, that Jesus was black. No, not to find, out your, to find out that you're an Israelite, going to keep the commandments of the Heavenly Father, true Christ, as an Israelite. Right. You're on okay. seven eight minutes, man. No, 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 no. If, if I may interject real quick, uh, read Zephaniah chapter 2 and verse 1 real quick. This is our mission, right? Zephaniah 2 and 1. Mm -hmm. Gather yeah, yourselves right. together. Yeah. Yay, gather together, O nation our desire. So that's what we need to do. So we, called we, blacks, we square, we square out of time. Right. We square out of time. We got to go. We got to read the sponsors. Um, today's show, and, and hopefully we get you back there with some, some more time to see all the riddles with these Bibles again. Um, <laughs> yeah. The Air Conditioning Depot, Perfect Paint, Premier Clinical Laboratories, Pure H2O Water Treatment Technologies, National Workers Cooperative Credit Union, Checkers Cafe and Restaurant, Omni Fast Cash, MM Traders Limited, Virgo Car Rental, Ministry of Health, and Storm Frame Windows. Ladies and gentlemen, see you tomorrow.